So my name is Louise Picard. I'm president of Côte d'Apoint Quebec. And today it's with great pleasure that we have Colette Simon to talk about her quilt, her process. Um, thank you, Colette, for being there. Thank okay. you. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to Colette. Up to you, Colette. Yep. Well, hang on a second. Yes, we have a little um, sondage. I don't know what you call it in English, but anyways, we'd like to know where you're from. So we have people from a bit everywhere here, Quebec, Canada, USA, South America. Welcome to every single one of you. So nice to have you there for us. I'm sure you'll enjoy this. Colette has gorgeous quotes to show you. So shall we start, Colette? Yes. Well, I'm not sure if everyone, oh, I'm sorry, Colette. I'm not sure if everybody can see the, the uh, sondage that we did, but we have people from a bit everywhere here. So up to you, Colette. No, just a second. Don't, if, you are, if you want to ask questions, please use the Q&A at the, at the bottom of the screen, okay? That's quite right, yes. And we can't see you, we can't hear you. So please do write your questions. Um, I will try to interrupt Colette as little as possible. But yes, we will transmit your questions to her. To you, Colette. Okay. Well, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to uh, my presentation. And uh, I would like to thank a lot Côte Point Quebec to invite me to do a presentation. And I hope uh, you will have a good time with me this afternoon. I'll take, I'll put my glasses on. I'm getting older. <laughs> To begin, I, to begin, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Colette Dumont. I live in Saint-Romain, uh, in the border of Estrie and the Beauce territory. I am a farmer and a producer of milk and maple syrup with my partner, Christian Bouffard, on the ancestral farm, uh, dairy farm. And I have two children, Vicky and Alain, and my partner has two daughters, Marilyn and Roxanne, and together we have uh, eight uh, grandchildren. I'll, sh I'll just uh, uh, share my screen for you to see. Okay. Is it okay? Do you see it? Okay. And um, I will introduce myself. I will share a little bit of information about my life and uh, my achievement and my beginning in sewing everything. So there is. This is uh, some photo, a little bit, a little bit of history for me, uh, a little bit of a uh, uh, album photo when I have uh, three years, eight years, 15 years, 20, uh, 30 years and 45. And now with my husband Christian and uh, I would like to tell you before the quilting and sewing things what I like to do in the in my life while well, I love uh, gardening like uh, the, the photo here at the top my mother and my father like like garden gardening a lot so um, it came for my apparent interest I like uh, the photography also. Uh, I love, of course, the animals. Uh, I love also uh, do some four wheeling and pick some berry on the mountain. And uh, me, with my husband, we like to uh, take some little trips like uh, going to ice cream and uh, going on the field with our uh, trailer camp to uh, rest from the, the like the, in the farm, it's very uh, heavy and lots of people are coming. So we, we'd like to rest on, on the, in peace on the land we have. And I won't, I won't forget also my dog, Pitt. <laughs> He's a part of the family. Another thing I like to do also is um, I like to do the excavator. My husband has uh, three excavator. And uh, he taught me to drive one. So uh, I like to do some racking, rock landscaping also. And uh, we have lots of rock uh, 
here in Saint Romain. So I use them to uh, make uh, things I like to do. Also, here, this is the farm, dairy farm. Uh, at the left, you see uh, some of the cow. And my main job on the farm is to do office work, administration, accounting, and uh, farm management with my husband. Uh, also, in the summer, uh, my job is to do uh, raking on the field with my uh, tractor and my rake. And we scrape about uh, A on the 800 acres of, of uh, hay. And we do also uh, 600 acres of uh, corn silage also. Colette, I'm curious, how many cows in that barn? Uh, well, you see only one part of the barns. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we are milking 300 cow. We have about uh, 600 animals here. Oh my gosh. We have some uh, uh, people from uh, Guatemala who help us a lot. And uh, we need them. They're, they're, they're very good people. <laughs> I'll show you after that uh, a little bit of history of me. Uh, this is a... Uh, <laughs> it's funny, I'll, it's a little bit funny, but this is my mother, me, the me at the center, and my sister. Uh, like I said, the sewing uh, interests come from my mother. And uh, like we see on the photo, I think she likes it a lot because we have uh, the same dress. I think, uh, I don't remember because I was so young, but uh, I think she made it. <laughs> I start sewing about at five uh, years old on the old pedal machine like we see on the center. And uh, I remember not too much, but I remember that I like to uh, work with a pedal. It was uh, re really funny. And uh, uh, that gave me interest to, uh, to work with the machine. Uh, when I was older, like uh, in the photo on the bottom with my mother, uh, I think she would, would not like me uh, if I, she knew uh, put that photo on the, on the screen because she have rolls on, on her hair. And uh, yeah. it's just for you to show, for me to show you what kind of a machine I was, I learned to sew. At the right part, you see a better photo of the machine. It's a kind of a machine that we can change the, the black disc uh, some of the black discs, uh, some are for straight stitch, some are for zigzag, some are for um, other kind of uh, decorative stitch stitches. And uh, I'm looking at that center photo that you have at the bottom there, and I'm looking at that Kona thread. I guess <laughs> that made it quite promising. It meant that there would be a lot of sewing happening, right? <laughs> I, I don't know where she got that. They, but uh, she, I think uh, she used that a lot. I don't remember where she got that, but she used that a lot. <laughs> and uh, the photo on the right top part is my mother in uh, 1915. Uh, she died in 2016. Uh, she had uh, 91 years old. And uh, I thank her a lot for giving me the uh, interest I have on the sewing now. A little bit more of a tree also. Um, when I was young, I would like to do some uh, clothes thing for my giant doll. I had, I had a giant doll, uh, uh, a doll, I think it's a, the word, that's the good word. And uh, I used to make some clothing for that, uh, that doll. I didn't like to play like uh, with Barbies and things like that, but when it comes to make some clothing for them uh, that I will love I would love that so I'm that was my uh, passion to do some clothing for my little doll at around 15 or 16 years old um, I made some clothing for the my two nieces Barbies and I still have some few patterns here that I, I kept and I did some stuff animal bathing suit lots of handcraft sewing and uh, lots of little things like that, uh, work with my hands. At uh, 17 to about 23 years old, I worked on the clothing factory. And uh, in that time, I learned a lot about making clothes also. I got married, I made, I made my wedding dresses. 
and uh, I opened my workshop and started doing repairs and making clothes clothing for others. I love it. I love that to do uh, that thing. Uh, also here, I made a collection of uh, corporate coats. Uh, to, they were intended to be sold for, in, for factory to workers and uh, also made some baby pajamas. Well, the cat, it's, it's a special kind of cat to uh, that the older uh, people uh, use uh, and, and inside their hard uh, cap. Mm -hmm. Our cap. I made some apron also, hats, mittens, dresses, pants, and uh, what you can say, <laughs> everything. I had uh, at that time several seamstress for me at the job. And uh, that was only the, all, the, the only family income at that time. And uh, as in life, well, there's our ups and downs. And my life then changed following several events. Uh, I had to uh, close the factory because of personal issue, a divorce and everything that comes after that. So it was not very happy. <laughs> uh, at that time, after that, I didn't touch much of the sewing for about 10 years, uh, only the necessary I did for a little bit clothing for me and things like that, but I didn't do a, a lot. I, I think at that time I lost the passion for the sewing, but uh, I didn't know it was a, only a put, that passion was only on hold. I didn't know it would come back after, but it, it came back. In 2005, I met my husband now, uh, Christian, and I'm very happy for that. <laughs> In 2010, uh, I got back to sewing, but uh, not for making clothing. I want to do, I wanted to do other things, and I want to buy myself a new sewing machine, because I only had industrial one before. I didn't. I wanted a domestic one, and uh, the embroidery interested me a lot. And uh, I went to the store, see what was available. And uh, I was amazed what in the store we, uh, some items on display. There was a uh, really nice things that we can do. It's not clothing, but it was a, a, a piece of art, I, I think I can say. <laughs> and uh, there's a lady there, her name was Beverly Beauchemin, guide me very well. Uh, she gave me back the passion of sewing and uh, doing things like that. And, uh, I bought the Bernina 830, took a few lessons with it, and uh, I think it started. <laughs> <laughs> the project uh, that stopped me uh, the most was that uh, the project we see here, it's a stained glass technique, and I thought uh, in, it's Michelin uh, Lecomte that gave the course. And uh, that technique, I think I dreamed it at night. Uh, it was everywhere in my mind. Uh, with that machine, uh, Bernina 830, I bought also um, uh, software. It's called Bernina Design Software, Bernina, Bernina Design Plus 6. It's an embroidery pattern maker software. Oh. And uh, I learned that and uh, I watch uh, everything that related to that. Uh, I watch uh, quilting video, magazine, tutorial of all kind and I subscribe uh, to the quilt show to see all the show and I learn a lot in the in the it's because of internet we can see everything we want on the on the web eh? so um, I learned a lot that that way I have a facility to learn on the when I see things uh, if I see a, a video uh, I have facility to uh, to learn it, just to see it. So it helps me a lot. And then I have a comment here from, or a question I should say, from a lady called Ruth. Ruth says, from a fellow dairy farmer, when do you have time to quilt? <laughs> well, I told to my husband that uh, I'm in the, I, I don't know if I can say that. I'm not in retreat, but half retreat. Half retired. Half retired. Retired, all right. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, I'm 16. 
I, I will be 60 years old uh, this uh, summer. So uh, I don't want to work like, like uh, I was 25 years old, um, taking some more uh, slow job. <laughs> But I keep I keep the the hay the hay uh, raking because I like that. <laughs> and uh, yes, here we can see uh, through the life at, at the farm. When I go to my um, studio, I like to do things, all kind of things. So uh, this is a few things I was I was doing with the embroidery machine, some uh, towel holder, holder some doily with a technique uh, with paper piecing and uh, specific uh, I choose some specific part of the fabric to create specific design with that uh, technique and I did also uh, some slippers with embroidery on the front I did also for the children some uh, baby uh, quilt a baby here there's a baby wall quilt and some other baby quilt for my grandchildren now it's the the thing that this this uh this this is all the, some project for um, testing and some for learning what i see on the in internet uh, like uh, the one the christmas uh, quilt it's a paper piecing like uh, the other doily and the, 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 the photo before. It's a um, specific cutting with the specific fabric with lines or flower or anything. We can do some pattern with the design of the fabric. Like uh, in the center, you see some red lines. It's the fabric that is made like that. So I was cut to uh, to uh, I, what I can say, it's, it's cut to make the, the lines with the paper. The second one at the right, it's called a uh, fire flower. Is the, I think it's the precur, uh, the, the one before, the, 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 it's that quilt that gave me the idea of the flower that last, you'll see it later. Uh, I wanted to use the fabric uh, lamé, the metallic lamé, but some other color. Like uh, when I used to uh, take the course with Michelin, we had only some gold and silver color. But uh, I wanted to do things, other quilts with other colors. So I bought some lamé, cut it in the, in the bias, the width I need to be cut. And with the folder, I made the lamé the color I want, so I could uh, use uh, any kind of fabric, any kind of uh, design, and any kind of color also to do um, some other quilts. This is another project. We call it Magnolia. And uh, this project uh, I, I was, uh, was teach with uh, one guild in Quebec and uh, the lady uh, did a wonderful job for it. They learned a lot, I think, and did the beautiful uh, wall quilt uh, with the pattern and everything. I guess they had a good teacher, Colette. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the photo at the right, it's some postcard that I did uh, for the uh, Canadian Quilt Association for in Abel and, and Alberta. It was in Alberta, but it was canceled. But uh, the postcard was intended to uh, raise a fundraiser for an, uh, an hospital, children hospital, and they were sold. I think it was uh, last uh, fall, and uh, it was a gift to them and sold for raising funds. And I really like to do a postcard because it's um, it's a small project, doesn't take long, and uh, uh, it's easy. <laughs> Here we have some uh, other uh, test project. The one in the left, it's a test project for uh, making me um, more accurate, accurate in my work. And uh, use, I also use a brown lamé. The one in the right also, 
it's another project that use a uh, brown lamy and a little bit more pieces inside but uh, it was uh, really fun to do it's a thing uh, we can mix the the fabric and the lamy that gave some uh, effects i think this is a project i'll try i tried to uh, do it's a um, flower uh, it's a picture of a uh, apple flower that I have in my field here i have some tree of a uh, uh, apple uh, tree and uh, i wanted to do uh, some um, painting on the fabric so what i did is i took a white white fabric prepare for dyeing pfd i think it's the name and i designed the the I sketched the 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 petal of the flower and then after that i painted the flower and then it was cut all around the white part but well what's left of the right piece of fabric it was cut and applied to a back uh, background fabric and uh, quilted after and i was uh, very happy that uh, it was on the cover of the Canadian Quilter magazine in uh, September 29, 2019, and it was used also uh, in other places. Here, I tried to, uh, I wanted to learn uh, AQ7 and uh, have the, the software, and I wanted to uh, try some um, applique with my Bernina machine, but applique with some embroidery on the top of the applique. So uh, I did the center part with uh, AQ7. Yeah, I wanted to try that. And uh, the around surrounding part is a uh, fabric applique with uh, embroidery over it. So it, I think it was the beginning of what I will do uh, in the few, few years later. <laughs> This is a project that um, I did uh, for, uh, uh, again, it's a stained glass uh, panel. And uh, this panel was inspired by um, a panel by John Baker Design. Um, and I want that quilt to be a part of the Vermont Quilt Festival in 2014. And uh, I had a very hard time to have the permission to use it um, when I, get the permission to use it. They, sold, they tell me that uh, I wasn't allowed to uh, sell the quilt because of the design. So after that, I didn't take any uh, uh, photo from others if I could have uh, difficulties to have the permission. And that quilt uh, won uh, Best Quilt Outside USA in 2014 and the first place uh, in its category at the same place. And uh, I was very uh, pleased for that because I didn't, I went, I went not, uh, I didn't go at the show because I was working on the field and uh, Micheline Lecomte took the quilt to go to the United States to um, present it. And uh, one night she called me, uh, I think it's a Friday night. She called me, uh, Excited that she she told me that she told me that I was uh, winning I was won the bell like I said the bell quilt outside outside USA in the first place so it gave me some uh, energy to make some more. <laughs> this is the the other one after it calls victory. It's a uh, like I it's again it's a embroidery over applique. Um, many techniques and um, I like uh, when I did that uh, quilt it's because I like the Victor Victorian image a lot so I bought some uh, Victorian image on the on the internet it was easy to have the permission because it's uh, it's uh, it goes with the, when you buy an, an image it goes with it and uh, I did some uh, some really embroidery all around here and uh, it's all piece and this quilt as uh, I, I will send it uh, to uh, aqs in paducah 2016 it was the first time 
I send a quilt over uh, uh, a big uh, show like that. And I was very pleased that uh, it won first place at the machine uh, stationery. So uh, I, again, it gave me the energy to put, give, put some more energy and making some more. <laughs> and it's a, I think it's a, what, what we call that, um, I don't know the name, but. Uh, uh, Say it in French, see if I can help you, Colette. In, uh, in passion. Passion, passion. A passion, definitely. A passion. Yes, passion. That's, that's the name, a passion. <laughs> and uh, while we were going to uh, Paducah, we had some, uh, uh, very, well, we have problems on the road. We had two, uh, two flat tires and uh, I arrived almost late on the, at the show. And uh, well, uh, we went, we arrived, but we arrived late. <laughs> Here, there's, you see the, what I do for the making of it. Alette, you arrived late at the show, but you had quite a surprise, didn't you? Because you didn't know you were going to win. No, I didn't know I was going to win. And uh, the lady it's, um, told me when I arrived that uh, she asked me, did you receive my email? Well, no, I didn't receive her email. I didn't receive her email because I was not at home. <laughs> You were on the road. <laughs> on the road. <laughs> so, uh, because they, they send an email one day before the show if we, if we win. So okay. I didn't receive it. I didn't know. But I, I was very a good surprise. <laughs> Here we can see uh, how I build uh, the pattern with the software. It's uh, like the photo on the left. You can, you can see the kaleidoscope with one of the picture I took uh, from the, the book. It's made out of, a, well, I use that to create the embroidery over it. You'll see it later how it's done because another, another the photo. And um, the bottom part, you can see uh, the photo at the bottom. You can see what I see on the screen of the uh, software when I create um, an embroidery. The photo at the right, you can see what's the really roughly picture of what's all around the center medallion. Uh, this is uh, about uh, what I can say. Uh, you know, the when we do some Embroidery, we have to make some hooping and uh, the pattern all around, it's all one, well, it's about 20 hooping, but in, we need to uh, to make a registered, registered part, uh, registered, uh, registration to, mark. Registration mark, Look, I don't have it. Registration <laughs> mark. So if I make uh, one pattern, I've embroidered one uh, part, the second part, I have to make registration mark so I can align the second part that goes beside it. So that way I create the embroidery all around the, the quilt. And I think I had the 20 hooping, 20 or 24. I don't remember the, 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 the amount, but there are lots of hooping that has to be very uh, accurate. You mm -hmm. see some close up here. Like uh, the other photo before, you see the center part of the embroidery. Uh, at the other photo, you didn't see uh, because I put some um, fabric. It's fabric under and embroidery over. So what I do is I make registration, res registration uh, uh, seams with the software so I can see where to put the fabric. And after that, I make another scenes over the fabric. And then I cut the fabric to the just close, the closest to the seam I can do. And after that, the embroidery goes over that. That's the way I do the, 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 the technique. Here we can see uh, with that software, I can make my own stitches. 
like uh, the photo on the left top part, you see some circle is the stitches I created. So you can see it here at the center. It's the same stitches. The other one at the left bottom part, there's some other stitches I created and you can see it's applied here. This is, it is, the, is the software from your sewing machine, is that correct? It's the software from Bernina. It's All a right. special uh, software. It's not the, uh, we have to buy it. It's not on the machine. It's, uh, separate. it's really uh, separate. You see some others E here, some uh, other cre stitches that I've created, like a little kind of a flower that was applied here. And uh, you can, you won't see it, but I will show you the part this, the, the two part that uh, the embroidery are joining, it's about here. I'll show you with the here, about here. That's the joint, but you don't see it because uh, it was aligned very uh, closely. But that's the way I can take an embroidery and put another one beside it, another one beside it. So it, the way I can create all around. So your embroidery stitches have to uh, blend into one another, right? They have to blend it like here in the center. It's the part that was uh, curved. Yeah. Uh, that uh, was done with that part. And the rest, like this one, was done with that part. Different. Different. So it, uh, the, the, really the part that uh, goes over it, it's here, the, the, the part, the separate part. All right. Here we can see uh, some flower, the design in the, the embroidery software that I created. And you see the flower, it's here. And the other one here, it's a square part with two different color of a fabric and embroidery over it. We can see it on the, on the top here. It's a very, uh, it, they are made separate cut and sewn together after. Here we see some other stitches that have been created. created. Like this one you, is the stitches that we see here around. I, the thing, the way it's made is I create the stitches to create a medalli medallion. And when I stitch the medallion, I uh, and bordered the circle all around. There's another straight stitch circle that are created for placing the fabric. And after that, I cut the fabric and do the rest of the, the embroidery over the top of it. This one is another one, the other stitch. This is a single stitch. And when we place it with, uh, when we place it all together, very close, it creates that kinds of a, lace uh, border like we can see here. This is another one of the stitch I've been created. I think we see it here. That's the, around the circle. Here we can see uh, uh, some uh, lame also. And uh, here it was a little bit uh, hard to do because we have to stop and border in it, put the lame under stop and put the lame over. It's a little bit uh, difficult to do, but uh, it was done. And yeah, the lame actually collect the fabric that you use and you recut and refold to make your own bias tape, right? Yes, That's yes. What so you can choose any color you actually want. It's the fabric that you choose, right? That has the color? It's the, you mean the lame? Yeah, exactly. Well, the, the, the lame depends what we can buy. It's there, there's not uh, available uh, everywhere. Eh? And uh, the color, we have to uh, search a lot for buying yeah. some other color. Yeah, I guess we don't have a big, big variety in the way of color. No, no. in the store, you don't have too much. Uh, we have to go to uh, internet and buy, uh, uh, buy uh, somewhere uh, where they sell most more color but uh, it's not very easy to find this is the photo from paduka 2016 
and uh, with uh, the uh, two other second prize and the third prize. And what I was, they were giving us, it was a, a, a present, a, well, a vase with uh, the name on it. Really nice. Now I will talk about uh, Fleur de Glace. Avant que tu commences, uh, just before you start, Colette, I have a comment here from somebody that says, you probably don't sleep during uh, the night, right? <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours a day? <laughs> I tell often to people, uh, lots of people uh, count sheep to go to sleep. I think I count beads. <laughs> Beads and pieces and <laughs> and projects, right? <laughs> and projects. Uh, I have another question also for you here. Somebody says, how much thread did you buy in a year for? <laughs> how many thread? How uh, much thread? How many? How many thread? Uh, well, when I, when I go to show, I think uh, I buy some thread a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of fabric, I'm sure, too. <laughs> oh, fabric also. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Like uh, like here, it's uh, the name of the quilt is Fleur de Glace. Fleur de Glace means a uh, flower of ice. It was uh, inspired by um, a real flower of ice. Uh, it's a kind of flower that forms in the Arctic where a specific condi condition or weather happens. And uh, they don't last long, but uh, if you go to internet, just uh, on Google, write uh, Fleur de Glace, you will see some. And uh, that was inspired by that. And it was inspired also by uh, Kalideska. And uh, the technique I want to make is uh, lame and uh, stained glass. So all that together, I created uh, that quilt. Uh, I was happy that uh, in the first time it was a show, uh, the, the quilt have been shown, it was in Canada in Toronto, 2017 one best of show at that time. And uh, that was a really great honor for me. And uh, it was uh, entered in other shows also and won some prizes on other show. And uh, in Daytona Beach in 2018, uh, it won a best of show also. So uh, I have two best of show for that quilt and uh, I'm really pleased for that. I will tell you how it, how it starts. Uh, that kind of a design. Uh, when I go to uh, with my uh, husband, I go some uh, time in the car and take some trip. I have a pad with uh, paper and a pen, and I, when I'm wait while I'm waiting, I draw some some uh, some thing on the paper, and uh, I keep them just to in case. And then I try that design on the Scalioscope software, and. Uh, I think it went, uh, it did uh, like, uh, it didn't nice designs. And uh, I used that for making the, the quilt. Here we can see uh, with the design under the, on the software when I, where I make some uh, embroidery, we can, I can, what I do is I put the, the image under, and I create the embroidery over that image, so it helped me a lot. And uh, but it was not created all the all at once. It's one part, and after that, uh, joined to another part and joined to another part. So it's uh, like here you see uh, all the parts that have been uh, put together. This is the we can see the the image of a, my screen of the software. This is where I created the the last the the, the exterior part of the quilt. Uh, like we see here, I created it's a one of an eight of the design here. Like you can see, uh, half it's it stopped here the half. When I've created one of the eight of the design. I take that design and I reverse it to the other side. So I create a, a, a one of four parts, the qu quarter of the, the quilt. And uh, when I want to know where 
would look uh, uh, on the full part, but I'll just uh, add three other parts on the surrounding this one and uh, give me uh, an idea of what it will show. And when I want to change something, well, it's easy. I, I just have to, uh, to uh, delete one part and create another one and add it to it after. So this is the way I create the embroidery. The, um, the thing I want to say, it's uh, all the pieces, I will show you at another picture. Here, when I create that quilt, it was done a uh, separate part. Like what's inside the lamé, it's uh, one uh, pieces and everything, er that when the all the pieces are in border, I join them all together with a little zigzag. So when they are joined together, I put the lamé over the scene that's create that will create the what you can see here. I'll show you wait, you, what you can see here. It's yeah, I have for you at the same time here. Um, somebody Mary asks says, do you use a stabilizer under your embroidery, or do you embroider directly over the sandwich onto the sandwich? No, it's a no. The, the, it's a there's some stabilizer under the embroidery, and I try to take off as much as I can before joining them together, but there, there's no sandwich at that part. It's there's only the top part. So the stabilizer is in your hoop and then you quilt your, on, quilt post, your top. Well, I'm, I'm border on the, on the hoop and okay. uh, cut the pieces separately and assemble them together after. And then put the, the lamé. Okay. And uh, when, well, the lamé, the lamé is done, uh, what can I say? Le lamé is, is applied uh, after uh, the sandwich is done. The embroidery, there's no, in, there's no batting inside, but when the, the quilt top is done, there's no lamé. Oh. The lamé goes the three layers. It's sewn between the three layers. So it becomes part of the quilting actually. The lamé when you put it on. Yes, it's, it goes. It also, well, sorry, yes, yeah. there's three layers. The the the, the 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 stitches goes under the three layers. Okay. When I when it's stitched, but I can I can glue it before. It's possible have, to glue it before. Oh, you can place it before. I have another question for you, Colette. Here, somebody is asking me. Uh, is asking you actually. What <laughs> kind of thread do you use? And this uh, is from for, the, for the embroidery or for the the quilting. I guess general, let's put it both ways. Uh, I use what I like. <laughs> <laughs> what about your piecing? When you piece or- When I piece, I use a regular uh, 40 weight, uh, regular thread. Okay. And uh, when I do some uh, quilting, sometimes I use some embroidery thread also, but sometimes I can use some finer thread like uh, 60s or 80 weight. Some Hundredth weight, it's really rare, but uh, sometimes it can be done. It depends the effect we want to uh, to give to the quilt. Yeah, if I guess also, also sometimes you might use monofilament when you don't want to see the stitches. Yes, sometimes, right. but not. There's no monofilament on that quilt. All uh, right, we'll, I'll, we'll see some later. But uh, this quilt I'll use. Uh, I've been using, um, if I remember well, uh, forty weights, forty weight, forty weight. <laughs> regular thread on that quilt and See, uh, there's I some, have, there's I, some have, also. I have another question here i'm sorry um Colette. i have another question here somebody's asking me do you have any idea of how many hours you put on a quilt no but uh no in many years <laughs> <laughs> two years to do it two years, so we won't count hours here <laughs> no i don't count the hours but i can't uh, i know i started what month and what years but i and i still i uh, end it finished it in uh, what month and what years <laughs> but well, in the summer I don't work a lot because of the farm work it's only uh, most of the work I've, are done in the fall winter and uh, spring when you don't need to be outside well uh, and before before I went to uh, to this well for now yes but 
when be I was younger, it's not the same, uh, not the same thing. But for now, it, this is where uh, I work almost on the summer on the farm. But the rest of the time, there's always paperwork. There's always something all year to long. <laughs> okay. There's some other close-up of the center. You see here some uh, Esvarovsky uh, element, and that uh, uh, some beads are all around. And you see also some um, stitches that have been created created that at the last uh, quilt, like uh, Victory. You see here some uh, some um, oops, here there's some new uh, stitches, and uh, we see one more here some new stitches that have been created. Okay, here we can see uh, the quilt uh, with a hole in it. It's a hole filled with um, beads. There's one hole here and one, another one here, and you'll see some other later. But <laughs> that's yeah. really not a hole that was done on purpose or was done on purpose. It was done on purpose and uh, it was cut when the quilt is finished. So uh, it was very stressy <laughs> to cut that, but uh, it went okay. <laughs> that would be stressful, yes. <laughs> yes, very yeah, stressful. Here you can see the, the other cut, out, cut part. The cut part are made like um, uh, in garment. It's a facing method. Uh, the quilt is cut and the pieces um, here you can it's like a facing it's a piece of piece of fabric sewn together and turn over and in the seam here I can put some beads to secure it and there's a part that goes under and there's a part that goes over here and it was covered by the lamy part here lamy bias so you don't see the seam, but you see the bias. And under, you have to have to uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I have to uh, sew it by a uh, hand and uh, invisible stitch. You see also the bar, the border, the border are bead. It's beaded, one bead at a time, <laughs> and the blue pieces that was inserted in the seam of the curve, white curve here. How many beads did we say on this quilt? Oh, this one is, there's almost uh, 30,000 beads <laughs> on, that, uh, on that quilt. You see some close up of the cutouts, the cutout, I mean, uh, the one I was explaining later, the before. And this one is a triangle form of a, of a cutout with the Sparovsky in the center and the Sparovsky uh, crystal is surrounded by um, beads. It's, um, it's like in prison in beads. So uh, when all the beads, uh, the seed beads are put around, I can uh, put some more and some more and make the flower kind of a, a jewelry on it. And that is cut out. What we see in that triangle is fabric behind it, eh? Uh, well, yeah, this this one, yes, this this is my table, work table. That we see behind that. Yes, oh. because it's white. You see, like here, we don't see anything because there's ne there's not there's nothing inside <laughs> in, in behind. Some uh, snowflakes that has been done uh, with beads and uh, applied to the quilt after. And uh, when I sew the snowflakes to the quilt, I pass the thread on almost, not every beads, but uh, lots of it, like uh, to, very, to be very secure that beads doesn't pop up and uh, breaks. And uh, uh, so almost every, every beads that's on the some of the center, but almost every bead on the exterior part, uh, there's thread passing through them and through the through the through the quilt also. 
So it it was not easy to uh, to sew because uh, there's not much space to work, but uh, uh, it was okay. <laughs> and it's quilted at that point. The quilt is finished, yeah, right? The quilt is finished at that point. You see some other snowflakes here. And uh, I was very pleased to pass on some uh, magazine like uh, AQS Quilt Week in Daytona Beach. Uh, I was uh, the best of show. And I was uh, the front page of the Canadian quilter at that time. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a quilt that is very hard to uh, photograph because it's white and blue. And uh, when people see it on the computer, not all the computer are the same, uh, the same color. Sometimes it can be grayish, sometimes can be yellowish, and it's a, it's a quill that's very hard to photograph. Well, let's put it this way. The screen certainly doesn't give it justice because I've seen this quilt and it's, it's fabulous. It's amazing. Thank you. Now I will speak about another quilt, Hope Pick. Hope Pick is uh, the name of Arfan des Neiges in French. Come on, come on. Uh, oh, White White Howl. White Howl. It's the name uh, like in the North people of uh, the in Inuit. They uh, call that Opic, so I took that name to uh, name the quilt. It's a quilt uh, with uh, painting thread technique. It's made out of uh, all the uh, Stonehenge uh, cotton from North Park uh, because I like that fabric. And uh, there's, the technique is also stained glass like uh, the other one. And there's some beads and crystal, obviously. <laughs> I think, uh, I, think I, like a, I like a lot beads and crystal. Uh, it was uh, sent to Manchester uh, in 2019 and it won uh, uh, good, uh, well, it won two, uh, two prizes and other places also. Um, and in Fall Padica in 2019, it win the uh, third place overall, uh, the, 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 the other quilt on the show. The way it's made is, um, it's a photo from a um, uh, photographer, Monsieur Gilles Archambault, that gave me the permission to use the owl photo for uh, using it because I never seen an owl before. So I have to uh, add a photo. And the background and the birch tree, it's a photo like in the, the right part, right photo. It's a photo from uh, my backyard. So I used the, that photo with the photo of a birch tree. And with Photoshop, I mixed the three photo to make uh, my, center, my center photo for using it for making the, the quilt. The way it was made, see, it's uh, I used that photo to make an um, uh, owl on the white fabric. It was painted and uh, the most, the, the better, well, it was painted with, uh, it's painted with the, uh, we can see it's a um, really clear ink. It's not really paint, it's, kind of an ink and it went very well. When it was painted, I started to put some uh, thread on it. Like uh, the photo on the right, you can see I already started to put some thread on the head of the bird. And um, like in the birch tree, you don't see any thread, but you can see what I was been painting. So that's what it's look when it's painted, but without thread. Here we can see uh, the part of the tree that was in behind. Uh, it was uh, thread painted in a big hoop. The thing, it was really uh, hard to do. It's uh, I needed a bigger hoop, but very strong hoop that the, the fabric must be very stabilized, very, very, uh, very hard stabilized. I mean, if we, 
make some thread painting with uh, loose fabric and not uh, very placed in the hoop, it tends to shrink and uh, the shrinking does distortion and uh, it's not very nice. So uh, I had to uh, make the bird, the bird like we see in the other photo, uh, I had to make it twice to learn that. <laughs> so uh, the, the second bird was okay. The way I use the the way I make uh, the surrounding part of the medallion, I use a, a sketch on the sheet of paper, and uh, I divide that in uh, four parts. Like here, we you can see only one because there's a mirror, but uh, it's just for me to decide which part I like the most. So I have four pieces on that sheet of paper that I can create design around the medallion for me. So I, if I want that that design, I can choose it. So if I, if I want another one, well, I have some space on another quarter of the, fur, of the sheet to uh, design another, another thing and decide the part that I want the most. This is the way I was working with the, the outside. You see here some, uh, the border of that uh, quilt. There's, this is a border created separately. Uh, the white part here was embroidered separately on the machine. The brown part also here was embroidered separately on the machine and then assembled together. It's uh, made like um, a reverse uh, facing method. Like in garment, the facing usually goes inside the garment. This time, the facing goes over it, and uh, and to be turned over it, you there's supposed to be a seam here, but the seam is covered by lamy, so you don't see it. You will see a little bit later on the back uh, what I mean uh, by um, reverse uh, facing. There's a part creating uh, placing the beads. You see, they're all separate beads. Placed the uh, placed uh, one by one, and like uh, here I was creating a little diamond shape. And when the diamond shape is is done, well, I continue to put some beads on it until the other part. And here at the right, you can see a, a beaded uh, element to be applied after on the quilt. You see some uh, close up of the bird the bird is the the that quilt the center part was made uh, in four parts the bird two pieces for the background and one pieces for the birch tree so when they're all thread painted they were applied together after sewn together you don't see it but there's some thread painting also on the side to uh, cover where the fabric end. Another view of the birch tree. You saw it before when it was not painted, uh, not painted, but thread painted, and uh, now it's thread painted. Another part, the bottom. And here, some uh, jewelry that I've made with Swarovski crystal and um, bead. And here, like I said, the, you see the reverse part. Uh, the background was not cut for the, um, the border. It was cut a little bit more than I need because I wanted to turn under the fabric for joining the, the top part like uh, the embroidery uh, part that I was uh, applied on the with the beads, so there's it's not cut under. It's only uh, turnover and sewn to the front part. I I was uh, very surprised that uh, that quilt made the American Quilter uh, cover in January 2020. I was very pleased, very excited, <laughs> and uh, this some photo from a show that I've been uh, attending, some uh, MQX in uh, Manchester 
and uh, this is Paul Paducah, 2019. This is my husband. He was uh, having fun when we went to the Paul Paducah show. He was trying some machine, and uh, he had he was he had fun. <laughs> he had a lot of fun. <laughs> and here you see me also having fun to buy fabric, of course. Eh? We, we can't go to Paduka and not going to Hancock uh, for buying fabric. And uh, in the center, this is uh, where AQS were giving us uh, prizes for uh, like for, for Fleur de Glass here in 2017, uh, I had this jewelry. And in 2019, with Opic, I had uh, another jewelry. This is a jewelry made from um, paint from an automobile uh, factory, old uh, factory that was used to, when they paint the car, the, uh, the, the paint stick on the machine where, where they, they have been painted. And it, it creates like, a, it's not a rock, it's like a residue of painting of paint all together all put together and that company take that residue and cut it and make some jewelry with it that's why it's you see some marble uh, of a color i mean like if if we see some white they were painting white cars if we see if we see red uh, color it be, it's because they were painting red cars and uh, they use that for making jewelry this is the other one uh, that I've been created. It's called Winter Sunset. Uh, it was intended to be uh, in the show in the 2020 years, but uh, all the show were canceled. So uh, nobody saw it. <laughs> and uh, this is a piece of a quilt that have been uh, put uh, aside. Like, I mean, uh, before Opic, I was working on that quilt on the center, well, on, not on, only on the center, but I was uh, trying to do that quilt, but I didn't like it. So I stopped working on it. I put it aside and uh, when Opic was done, well, I was, I was saying to myself, I couldn't stop. I, I, I don't want to lose all the work I was do, I, was, I had made on that quilt because, like in the center part, it took me about four months to create the center part. So I didn't want to re get rid of that. And uh, I didn't know what to do with that quilt. So uh, lots of thinking occurred. And um, I decided to keep the center part and get rid of the exterior part. You don't see the exterior part now because <laughs> it's not there, but there's a photo you can see uh, the design of it after. So uh, I took the center part and create what's all outside the exterior. So uh, after that, I was pleased by the work. And also there's some beads on that quilt about a little bit more than the flower that last. There's about 21,000 beads on that quilt. And uh, and uh, was very pleased to do it. I got it. You said 21, actually. I think that's 31. Oh, 31. Oh, sorry. That's even <laughs> it's, more. 10, it's it's 31,000, these, yes. A little bit more than the uh, Fleur de Glace. I have a question for you, Carol, here. Um, Colette from Carol Briggs. Uh, Carol is asking um, when you did the, you know, the um, Utik, was that thread painting done by freehand motion or was yes. that with your software? No, no, it was freehand. Freehand, eh? Okay. Uh, the the Upic uh, quilt, the only part where there was an embroidery is the is the um, kind of a swirling on the top and the side. It's an uh, applique made by uh, uh, the embroidery machine. But all the center part, it's all freehand. Uh, another question here. Somebody's asking us, where did you learn your technique? Did you actually take classes or was just trial and error? Well, a trial and trial and error, but also uh, I go to internet often to go, like, watch videos and uh, have uh, I, I learn a lot just to see things. So it facilitate my uh, my uh, what I learn. I, I learn easy with that. I mean, just to for looking. 
you, you catch it fast. Yeah, <laughs> Jeff, I have, the, I have this disability, so it, tell, it tells me a lot. For the design of the winter sunset, it's like almost like a flooded glass. I did some sketch, basic image. And with the software, I create a kaleidoscope. And then I decided to go further with the process. I distort the image. And with this distorted image, I created another kaleidoscope. With that kaleidoscope, I liked, I liked it a lot. Well, I think it was it needed a little bit more. So I had just a little bit, a little, another part here to, to the, this, the number three Caliodoscope. And with the number five image, you see the, the final image. Like I said before, you see the, the other line, the exterior line. This is what I, disc I discarded. I didn't like it. So I take it off. So you see only the center part on the real quilt. There's some process of when I was making the quilt, um, all the pieces, the applique, it's turn side applique, except where the part is embroidered, like here, like you see an- You, you mean see, like a turned under, right? A turned under, yes, turned under. Uh, like we see here in the embroidery process, like here, it's, it's, on, it's only cut. There's no turn under. And here, there's going to be a, an embroidery here. So it, it's not finished. But here, you, you can see it's very, it's turned under. All the parts are turned under. And then after, stitched by um, invisible thread, one monofilament, invisible. Uh, here in this, the photo at the center, you can see the part where the point, the purple point are. Here, it was uh, done in one section. It was sewn to the arch, white arch here. And then I put that on my embroidery machine and do the rest of the embroidery to, uh, so it fits together. It's not a uh, it's, it's separate part, but it's, it fits together to, uh, to uh, be adjusted. The photo from the top right part is some uh, flying geese that we can see it was made before. The center bottom part here, center bottom photo is where I was making the beaded uh, exterior. I'll show you later uh, some example at the end of, of how it's made. And here we, you can see the quilting technique, quilting design was done before applying all the, the beads. The, Colette, I, the, I have a lady here by the name of Heather who is asking, uh, do you like winter sunsets now? Yes, <laughs> yes, I like it now. <laughs> it's not really my color. I intend my color are mostly bluish. But uh, I will. I wanted to try some other color. I want to be uh, because we always have our color we like. But I can't make always blue blue quilt. <laughs> so I want to do something different. It was a. Uh, uh, by the way, it was um, the color of it was uh, uh, come on. Uh, it was a. Uh, I searching the word. Um, the inspiration, the inspiration of the color was in, inspired by the, the winter sunset or the winter uh, uh, sunrise, it depends, <laughs> because it's blue, it's pink, it's yellow, it's, uh, that's why I called it winter sunset. You needed an extra challenge, right? <laughs> what did I She's, you needed an extra challenge. You had that. Oh uh, yes, I, I needed. I needed to change the color the, of the quilt, so uh, I changed it. This is some the center part with the beads applied and everything. 
end it. I have a question for you from Margaret. She's asking if the quilt was done on your uh, 8.30. No, this one was done on a long arm machine. Oak pick and uh, this one was done on the long arm machine. The only one, uh, the, on, the others before that, like uh, Flooded Lass and uh, Victory was done on uh, my Berlino 830. And uh, after, after uh, Flooded Lass, I bought the long arm machine and uh, it's, it's, it's very different from the working on a, on a domestic machine. <laughs> but I like it a lot. A lot. I learned a lot also. This part, we can see where I put some um, applique, beaded applique. There's one here on the, on the side. And uh, we see some more here. This is some circle a fabric uh, with beaded all around. And then after apply to the, to the quilt. There's some uh, paper piecing part here, square, and uh, some other here, smaller one here. But if those circles of applique, they're applique and then beat it, or are they beat it and then add it? Um, this is beaded before applique. All right, like right. the circle one here, it's a circle made of, with a stabilizer under. The part of the fabric is turned under and uh, beaded, all, all beaded. It's no, no totally beaded before applying to the, to the quilt. Like I said, the, the applique was a turn edge applique mm -hmm. and apply with the monofilament invisible we can see uh, barely see the, the the thread here like here it's all turn applique the center part here is a uh, at the left uh, photo it's a uh, the center medallion with the uh, different kind of beads like uh, Swarovski uh, bicone and uh, triangle it's all um, glass beaded there's no plastic a nice cake for us too. <laughs> There's some other photo here of the beaded uh, element. Like I said, this this is a ple uh, piece of fabric, round fabric, surrounded by beaded. And uh, like this part here, it's a um, it's a piece of fabric with stabilizer under cut the shape like an oval, pointed oval, but there's two parts, the, the, the front and the, there's two, um, two pieces joined together with the bead that forms, uh, you don't see, there's no right side, there's no back side. So the, the, the two sides are the same. So apply to the, the end of the quilt, you can see uh, each side is the same and it finishes the, the border of the, of the of the quilt. This is some tests bead that I that, that I have made. Uh, I keep all the test bead I do because uh, I keep to uh, see them later for uh, testing or for uh, give me some other idea because I, I do so much beading element. If I uh, sometimes I want some inspiration, so I go on my box and find uh, some inspiration of what I've done before. Like here, we can see the little red one. The center part it's about a quarter inch wide. It's really small fabric turned under and beaded all around. Like the turquoise part, it's about three eight three eight pieces turn upside down again and like this one it's beaded all around and I do some uh, other uh, I had some beads to what I want there's some uh, I'll show you some later uh, there's some project this project was intended to be uh, a course but uh, it was canceled 
in 2020 because of the pandemic. So uh, the course is ready. We'll see uh, in later what we can do with it. Probably uh, it was, uh, will be done, uh, demonstrated later when the pandi pandemic is over, I hope. <laughs> Stay tuned, people. Uh, pardon me? I said, stay tuned, people. Stay tuned. Uh, stay tuned for the rest, like they say. <laughs> I have a question for you here. Um, one of them is, uh, how much time is spent planning and designing your quilts versus actually making them? Um, I, I would say one third of the time is done for the planning and computer part, and the two third is for making it. For making about, it. about. And somebody's asking, where are your quilts now? It's all here, all at my oh, home. <laughs> none of them are for sale. They're your baby. Well, right? it's, it's like a baby. We don't want to sell it, <laughs> but probably <laughs> later. If, if somebody asks me to, 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 uh, to buy it, I will consider it. I will consider. It depends who is buying it and for what. And uh, that's, uh, that's why I've... I, they all here. You see some in back of me. You see a flooded last, and you see a pick. And on my table, you see you don't see it, but I will show you it later. Uh, there's some. The others are there. I have another question for you, Colette. Um, Somebody's asking: Is uh, the quilting using the long arm done freehand, or is it computerized? No, I don't have computerized on the my long arm because I didn't want it. I want to be uh, in control of the. The, the lines I've make it, I'm making. Right, and another question. Yeah. You bead in your lab at leisure. Uh, you mean, can you repeat? Oh, oh, let's put it this way. When and where do you do your beading? Uh, the beading, uh, you mean in my day, time oh. of the day, or but no, at the time of where the quill is finished? Well, let's put, uh, let's put it this way. Would you quilt, in, would you bead in front of the television? Oh no, I don't. I don't beat in front of the television. Television because it's uh, takes um, lots of uh, minded energy. I have to be very um, careful to think what I'm doing because uh, it's it, it's um, it's a process where we can uh, make really easy mistake uh, and undo beads and so. Uh, no, I don't. I, I, I listen to music, but I don't listen to uh, television. Yeah, and I can see those little bees rolling everywhere, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, and it's yeah. That's a that's another thing. Also, I have to be a stable, stable bees. A table with stable, ta stable table. It's hard to say. A stable table, right? <laughs> stable table, and uh, <laughs> lots of lights and lots of uh, glasses. <laughs> Because it's some are some beads are very thin, very small. Good time. I'll show you in a few minutes. And uh, for the last uh, photo, I will show you what's on my machine now. You see just a little part of it, and uh, it will be called uh, Fire and Ice. And uh, I'm really I'm doing now the uh, quilting part, the quilting design, and. Uh, after that, I will do the beating things, the thing I like. <laughs> and that's all for the presentation. I can show you uh, some other Hello? things after this, if you have to catch on question. I'm looking, Hello? I'm looking at that quilt you have on the long arm. Those are tiny flying geeses. Is that right? Uh, really tiny, tiny flying geese. Yes, <laughs> some are, uh, if I can remember, a quarter inch, uh, quarter, the smallest one here, the part, the light, yellow they're about a quarter inch oh my god see, any holes on this one <laughs> yes the, the center part you don't see the hole because it's not made but the center part where the white uh, kind of a star is here all the center will be beaded so we'll, be uh, we'll cut it after i was going to ask you if there are going to be any beads on this uh, one i think that well gonna, there, there are going to be uh, some beads also <laughs> Are you going to try to make it 32,000? <laughs> uh, I don't know how much it's going to need, but uh, probably close. Close. <laughs> close to it. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll stop the.
the presentation. And uh, you want, do you want to see the, um, the bead? We want to see everything you want okay. to see. I will, sh I will just um, uh, here. Okay, this is the camera. I will show you the part that I was saying for uh, winter sunset. Mm -hmm. It's uh, pieces of fabric turn under, but there's two pieces. There's an, uh, another one here. That's the back side of it, but there's no back side, there's no front side. It's two pieces of fabric with stabilizer under joined together by the the bead. Show you. I hope it show, show. I hope you see it. Uh, try to focus. Okay, they are joined by bead. The, the two part of the fabric are joined together by the beads. Can, probably you can see it more. I think. Okay, you can see the bead here. Mm -hmm. Where did you learn your beading techniques? Again, in internet videos. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> like uh, I can show you what kind of beads. Turn away. This is <laughs> this is beads number six. They're big, really big. And this is beads number eight. Oops getting smaller getting smaller beads number 11 <laughs> and beads number 15 <laughs> they're the size of the points on your stiletto there yeah if you can if you can see the the size of it you can imagine the size of the beads and, and then one by one one by one and then some uh, crystals, Swarovski crystal here. Some are small. And then what I was saying, like uh, in the winter sunset, the applique, beaded rounded applique, it's like that. There's one. Okay. If I turn it under, it's turned on over a uh, stabilizer and then beaded all around. Just put that away so you can see better. Here, this another one. And then you can see here more fast, it's easy, more easier. It's a piece of fabric that has been turned and then beaded all around. Because this one is used as an applique, right? Yes, yes, those are used like applique. But this one, like I had showed you before, it was used on the border because there's two sided. Right on the edge. Uh, yeah, right on the edge. There's some test things that I do. That's why it's not finished because I keep it. I keep them all to uh, have inspiration, and I can show you a little bit more. There's some more, <laughs> lots of it. So Colette, you have a stash of fabric, but now also a stash of beads, right? A stash of beads, and also uh, like uh, I didn't say that before, but I keep all the little pieces of fabric, everything, because I want to do something later with it. I have a thing in mind for uh, doing things. All the smallest people, the, the smallest pieces of fabric, about half an inch and bigger, I keep them. So I have a lot of, I have a box full of that kind of pieces. It's because I want to do something else later, but I won't tell you what, what now. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> will be secret, a secret. <laughs> so uh, if people are keeping those pieces, uh, they will be useful later. Somebody's asking me if you glue any of those Swarovski crystals on your quilts. 
No, they are not uh, glued anything. They, it's, um, I'll show you one here. They're all sewed on, I guess, eh? But they're sewed on, but, uh, okay, here. If I show you this one, you see a Swarovski in the center. It's imprisoned in beads. So it's not glued, and there's no glue. The Swarovski crystal is uh, imprisoned in between seed beads. And when uh, it's done, I don't know if I have one here. No, I don't have any one here. But uh, when, the, when the crystal is imprisoned with the uh, seed beads, after that, I can do the rest, the rest of it, like adding beads, uh, adding some more beaded and, and more and more like this one. You can see probably here, there's a center Swarovski bead surrounded by, crisp, uh, by seed beads, imprisoned by seed beads, like under, you can see it, it's all inside. And when it's done, I had beads all around for uh, making the design I want. You uh, you were, here. Alex, you were talking about a surprise or uh, lots of pieces of fabrics that you were keeping, you were going to. Somebody's asking me, when can we expect to see your current surprise? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but uh, it will come. <laughs> I don't know. The time will, uh, the idea will uh, be uh, more, um, uh, more. Uh, I mean, uh, more developed. But uh, it's pretty developed. But I need a little bit more time to uh, show you things about that. All right. I have another question also. Somebody's asking, do you make traditional bed quilts or just marvelous wall hanging quilts? Wall uh, hanging art, sorry. <laughs> well, traditional quilt, I like that, but uh, I don't know if I can say that. Uh, it's, it, it, I like that, but I like more doing that kind of thing because uh, it, it's a challenge. It gives me more challenge. I guess a traditional quilt, a bed quilt to you would be boring, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I like that, but uh, for making it, uh, I like better doing, I don't know if I can say that difficult thing. I, I think it's in my mind. <laughs> I have a difficult mind. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> and uh, well, I think that's uh, almost all for the, the presentation. I don't know if other people have some other question. Let me just verify. I'm checking out if I have other questions. I have lots of thank yous. Um, no. Nope. You want to present your studio just quickly? Uh, like okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will lift my uh, laptop to show you. Oh, show us your stash. Okay. <laughs> There's some. Uh, okay. Oops, this is my table where I work with my Bernina. Lots of space. This is uh, the, all my, uh, it's a studio, eh? it's not, it's not a, 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 it's a working space. It's a working space, exactly. And like you say, there's a lot of room there. So yes. hey, you're lucky. Yes. This is the where, oops, cut in the. This oh. is what my this is my working table. You're so in you the see. house right now, aren't you? Alex? Pardon me? You're in the house also. Well, yes, I'm in the house. And this is the the other part of my working working space, where my long arm uh, you see in the back. So what Colette hasn't told you is that she was lucky enough to have a to have a husband who took down a wall for her. Yes, <laughs> yes, because I, I, wall. I wanted to buy a long arm machine, and it was a room on uh, upstairs the house upstairs in the house, and. Um, the long arm machine wouldn't fit in the room. So uh, we took down two walls. So the width of the, what you see here is the width of the total house. 
It must have been challenging to get the machine upstairs also, eh? Uh, well, not really, because uh, the people uh, uh, installed it for me here. Right. It's all, it, it came all in one separate pieces. In separate pieces. Oh. I just want to say something if you want to write something to Colette. So take, yeah, we will we'll close like in a few minutes. So it's time to write in the QA a section if you want to write something to Colette and we'll send it send it her to send it out to her after the, the show. The, the meeting. I want thank to thank you, you very much, uh Courte Point Quebec, for letting me making a presentation and uh, you are wonderful. <laughs> well, I, I have a comment here from some. Somebody, hang on a second, I just saw it go by, I went too fast. Upstate New York says, thank you, Colette. Uh, you are amazing. I've met you twice at quilt shows and you are so generous sharing your time, telling us about your quilt. So yes, thank you very much, Colette. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you very much. And for all of you who are out there, um, as you know, March is um, 21st of March is quilting day. So Coupe Point Quebec is going to have a few more of these presentations. Stay tuned, um, visit our website, visit our Facebook page to learn more about these presentations throughout the month. We'll have a few of them, a uh, few events. So I hope you'll be there to join us. Thank you for being there. Merci bye bye. Merci Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> have a great day, everybody.